Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Wind Waker. In the last episode we gathered all of the Triforce pieces and came down to Hyrule only to find that Zelda had been kidnapped and taken to the top of Ganon's Tower. This episode we'll be working our way up Ganon's Tower to try and free her. So there's four rooms in here so we're going to start with this one in the kind of like bottom left and go into it. Now this should look oddly familiar shouldn't it? You'll notice as well, if you just listen to the music in the background as well, you'll hear that it sounds like it's got hints of... It's still Ganon's theme, the da-da-da. But it's also got... Um, it's got hints of the Dragon Roost Cavern music in it, which is kind of cool, because this whole area is slightly uh, reminiscent of Dragon Roost Cavern. Like, you hear the drums in the background, which is pretty cool. Like, um, it's a bit of a kind of flashback, which is awesome. So, if we climb to the top of this grapple thing, then we can Deku Leaf across here. Which, oh, no, we can't. No, we totally can't. Bollocks. Let's try that again. There we go. Now we can actually properly glide. Though we are running low on magic. Anyway, so some bubbles here. Oh, I'm just going to oh, kill them just to get them out of the way more than anything else. Now, you'll notice this doorway looks almost kind of like grey and frozen. Kind of creepy. Let's head through and see what's through it. Oh yes! <laughs> it's Goma! Um, looking creepy as ever. Because you'll notice everything's grey, apart from us. This is a flashback. So we fight the boss again, and you can't see, but looking on the item screen, we only have the items that were available to us in Dragon Roost Cavern. So, which is like the grappling hook, and that's such about it. Um, worth noting at this point as well, even though it's all black and white, you can take picture graphs here of Goma, and it counts. And because Goma is, you have to, it's easier in the in the HD version, but usually, like, you have to have had some pretty good planning in order to get the, the deluxe pictograph box by the time you get to Goma for the first time. So if you're missing a pictograph of her, now is a very good time to get it. But the boss actually proceeds in exactly the same way as it proceeded originally, which is bring the ceiling down on her head a couple of times. Can I have some, oh, I'm not going to get any magic, am I? Because this was before magic. Um, either way, we're nearly about to get the final kind of thing on her. So it's cool that you get to kind of like fight the old boss again. Let's grapple one final time. And swing a dee doo -dah. I love that shot, it looks awesome. Slightly less cool in black and white, but ooh. We very nearly landed in the lava there. Anyway, that's her armor done. And smashy smash. Now she goes into angry carrot form, which is pretty... Oh, dear! <laughs> which is pretty straightforward. What's she doing over there? Come on, over here. Come on, woman. I'm over here. There we go. So, if you remember, you just grapple onto her... Oh, dear me. She's actually doing a damage to me. Grapple onto her face. Good lord. I had no much problem with this the first time. What's happening? Why is my grappling hook not hitting her? What? What? I'm, I'm grappling her. There we go. Now we're just going to town with her on the sword. You'll notice as well, because we've got the hero's charm, boss health appears on the bottom of the screen, which is kind of cool. Two rounds of damage, and she dies. But she doesn't die, it just we get warped out of the flashback, and appear back in the central chamber. And Goma is crossed off there. Yes, you can see how this is going now, can't you? If you can't, well, just wait a few seconds and you'll see. I'm just going to quickly go around and grab some of this healing stuff. We didn't take much damage, but I just... I don't like- oh dear! Oh, that was okay. I don't like having this little magic and- come on. And yeah, we need the magic in the next bit coming up. Oh, it's taken all my items off because yeah, you physically get all the items that you didn't have at that point taken away from you, uh, which is slightly annoying. But either way, let's come through here. Oh, there's another Bokoblin and stab in the face. So I'm just going to kind of proceed around clockways because that goes in the order that we actually originally did the dungeons. So if that first one was Dragon Roost, unsurprisingly then, for a Saven. Well, Forbidden Woods. And yeah, again, if you listen carefully, you can hear, like, bits of this, of the forest music kind of twisted into Ganon's theme, the kind of... Which is quite cool. And uh, just a nice little touch there. So, we just need to basically work our way along here. Uh, this is why I was recharging magic, just using wind. It doesn't use the boomerang anywhere, this kind of... Oh, no. This, like, um, mini dungeon bit. Uh, let's hit you again, and again, that should be close enough, now when this fleshy peduncle comes back up. Fleshy peduncle, that's an accurate but slightly horrible term. Either way, uh, let's go over here, push, 
push, push. And if we glide down onto this one, when these two come up to meet each other, hop onto the higher one. And there is no um, gondola this time, we just have to glide there on our own steam. And repel some pea hats, like when we were gliding towards the forest haven. Oh, there we go. Once again, there's a door at the back here, which is like, um, greyed out. Because, surprise, surprise, it's another flashback. Can you guess what's through it? Indeed. Like last time, you can, basically, you can take a photograph of Caldemos here if you didn't get one last time. Here's a little trick, though. Wow, I'll show you in a second. First things first, put the, get the boomerang on. And like we fought her last time, her, him, it, whatever this thing is. Just focus on boomeranging down all the kind of, like, attachment, vine, strut things. Um, let's do a little bit more to that. Now, there we go. That should be all of them. Yep. Now, Grandma's Soup is going down the hatch because with that in you, you do twice as much damage. And you can literally just finish off the boss in one round of attacks. Yeah, that's a useful one. That's not so useful with Goma because at least the first half of her... You have to not get hit for that to work, and the first half of Goma is the long half, and that part you can't deal damage to her through conventional means anyway, so there's no point using it there. But it's a nice little trick there to just kind of speed that up a bit. And obviously now we've still got the superpower until we get hit again, so let's see how long we can make that last. Though actually this one is a lot harder. Not the boss, just the actual little sub-dungeon section, because this is, surprisingly enough, the Earth Temple. You can kind of, yeah, definitely see how this is going here. You'll notice that sword's kind of slightly gold as well, which is cool now. It's glowing with not only the power to repel evil, but also the power of soup, which is cool. So, these things will try and fall on you, dealing you better damage and releasing re-deads. Oh god, oh god, oh god! Oh, buggering. There we go. Well, there goes the granny's soup, so we don't need to be careful anymore. Ow, ow, ow. Fuck this. Ooh, there's a fairy in that one. Awesome. Oh, that old jump attack thing still works on re-deads, which is nice. I say still, as if it wouldn't for any reason. Either way, continue up here. And now, there's a switch. Press it. And those things come down. Who remembers the Earth Temple? Because when you get off it, they, of course, close back up again. So we need to place something somehow on them. What can we place on them? Oh, a shadow choo-choo, perhaps. Oh, bloody pose. But the light is down here as well, so we need to kind of, like... Either lure them down here, or just get them close enough that you can hit them from a distance with the lights. Uh, like, so, there we go, let's get that one in place. I think I hit one of the poses as well, because it seems to have dropped its lantern. Either way, when you've got managed to freeze one of the choo-choos, whack it on the switch. And then there's not a great deal of margin for error here, so you kind of have to get there quite quickly before the choo-choo comes back to life. This one, similar thing, step on the switch, and this little thing opens, but of course, the moment we step off the switch, Closes again. I'm stepping on the switch first because it always shows, like, the cutscene of it the first time. And you don't want to, like... You don't want to have to show that while you're still on, like, while the choo-choo is on the timer to come back to life. Um, but anyway, let's try and hit some of these. Let's try and hit that. Yeah, that'll do. This time, the only difference is that the light source is at the end rather than at the start. So you have to kind of, like, freeze them from that end, then run down. It just means you've got slightly less time. But generally... Oh, damn it. Right, I might have fucked it here. Depends how quickly this chew comes back to life. Should just about be fine. Because that one's not come back to life yet. That one ain't get it yet. Oh, bugger. Stealth Oss. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I am fantastic. That was glorious. Head back through the crazy time warp. And you can see how this is going. We get to hear this awesome music again. Because it is... Chow Haller Mark II. So, the same thing as last time. Get light. Brr zap him. When he's bazapped, pick him up, target the big spiky pillars on the wall, and bowl him. When you bowl him, charge up your sword, and then blend through as many of the poses as you can. It's interesting that killing the pose, you can see, detracts from his health on the bottom of the screen. So, like, you can work out how many poses you've got left just by how much health is on that one. Which is kind of cool, so he's on, like, a third of it. If you use the kind of spin attack tactic, you should be able to kind of... Uh, let's hit him there. Ah, he actually damaged me. That's more than he. That's more than the real Jalhaller ever did. And there we go. You might actually see the light sources moving this time because I was very fortunate last time I fought him. Maybe not so much this time. Once again, charge up the hurricane spin and unleash. Blend some pose. Now there are so few pose left on this last run. It's not worth using the hurricane spin. You're better off just using a bow and arrow to try and shoot them. 
So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's put the bow and arrow on. Now I can hear him drawing in breath. If you just hit him kind of with one blast of light, it kind of disrupts whatever attack he's trying to pull. Oh, still got him on this one. Okay, not having any problems with Jalhalla. Still just as easy now as he ever was. And then we just target the final pose and shoot in the face. Oh, yeah, you hit him with two shots, don't you? Bam, bam. There's this one over here. And one more, and dead. Three down. Ten minutes into the episode, and I've killed three of the bosses. This is this is good. Well done, me. Um, so, Jalhalla gets crossed off. Can you guess what the final one's going to be if we go through this door? I bloody wonder. Hup. Okay, uh, get away. Oh, well, that'll do, I guess. You can also break those bridges, like back in Dragon Roost, if you do a spin attack through the ropes. Don't know why you'd want to, but hey, it's there as an option if you're crazy. So, of course, the first thing they throw at us is bloody whiz robes. So, let's get some shit on. He's up there. Cheeky little bastard. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go, he's dead. Let's put the iron boots on as well. And we can just glide over here. You remember how it goes. The Wind Temple wasn't even that long ago, so that's pretty cool. Well, I don't know, I was only editing the episode that I did the Wind, wind Temple in, like, two days ago, so it feels recent to me, but it was about six episodes ago, so... Depends how fast I air these. If you shoot right between these two down drafts, you don't get pushed down, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can just come out here, grab some- Oh, no, I'd forgotten the Bokoblins were in there. I was genuinely tricked there. I was going to say grab some healing stuff from the pots, but apparently Bokoblins. But either way, let's actually grab some healing stuff from the pots anyway. It's weird they put potted Bokoblins there, because they were introduced back in the kind of Dragon Roost. The Dragon Roost, one of these kind of like little sub-dungeons, was incredibly easy. But either way, up here, and you can kind of see how this is going. Once again, I'm going to prepare the Granny Soup, because you can speed up Mulgira quite a lot with that. Ah, uh, music. It's slightly trippy this time. All of them have had a slightly trippy version of the music, but it's most noticeable in Mulgira's second run, I think. Uh, let's put that on there, and that. Drink the soup. We just need to make sure we don't get hit by the Bamulgas. That's something I learned since I did Mulgira. Bamulgas are the name of the little kind of things that she spits out at you. But yeah, if you kind of draw her in and then start doing soup damage to her, you do about a quarter of her health on each one, which actually I don't think is much better than normal. Either way, we will have a chance to go back and kind of replenish soup before we fight the final boss, so don't worry about using it up here, because as I say, you can only get... Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear! Ooh, she's going to try and do that thing underneath us where she comes... Oh no, she's not going to do that, that thing. Oh, no. Oh, it's targeting the Bamulgas and I want to target bloody Mulgira, don't I? You damn bloody bastard. There we go. Ah, that's half her health. Now she's going to try and come up underneath us and do that thing where she, like, flies through the air. Again, if you've missed the chance to get any of the photographs of any of these bosses, now is your best chance to do so, because it's the only chance you get to fight the bosses again, ever. I think... I'm not entirely sure, but I think you can fight them multiple times here. If you just come back through these... Oh, no, don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Yeah, if you come back to this kind of room again from the central one, I think you can fight them unlimited times here. Um, so you mean you get, in total you get at least two times to fight each boss, potentially multiple. I'm not entirely sure on that, so don't quote me on it or rely on it. But still, if you've been following this guide, you should have had ample opportunities to pictograph everything by now. Uh, you can spell oh, more bloody Bamulgas. Bamulgas, strangely enough, are not their own figurine. They're kind of stuck onto the side of hers, uh, which I guess is kind of cool. Um, they're one of the couple. There's always a couple of enemies in this game that aren't their own figurine. Vines aren't their own figurine, the ones that drain your magic, um, even though they're kind of an enemy. And weirdly enough, Beemos. As I say, if you try and pictograph Beemos, it gives you Armos. Um, but then again, you only see a few Beemos in the game. It's strange that Beemos never come back. Like, you see him in Tower of the Gods and never again, which is quite odd. But either way, she should be about to spit up here. And then let's one more time. Oh, why is it. It's by default targeting the Bamolgas, and it's really annoying. Uh, I just want to target fucking Mogira. Is that so hard? Oh, I'll just have to kill some of the Bamulgas to get them out of the way. There we go. And this should be the final round of attacks. Indeed! Mulgero down. Granny Soup didn't help as much as I thought there. The only one it's really useful on is Caldemos, because Caldemos can be a bit of a slow boss fight anyway. But either way, that's the fourth boss defeated. 14 minutes to defeat every boss in the game again, except for Godan. But either way. So yeah, that looked pretty cool. Uh, let's proceed straight through there, and now we can actually start making our way up the tower. 
So, great stairway here, full of mini blends, uh, which are gonna be irritating. Oh, no, they're not gonna be irritating at all. I was a complete liar. Dude, why am I so in a mini blend drops an item orb? That can't be very common. Either way, we're still up full everything anyway, apart from rupees, and we don't really need rupees or anything more now. So, through here, we get somewhere creepy. Cool music, but creepy. Um, go to the left, then we come across a creepy room. It's got four things around the corner, and some water in the middle. So, boomerang up, and target in this order. Uh, Goma. Morgira, Caldemos, Jalhalla, and let fly. I think that was the wrong order, actually. It totally was. Let's try that again. Morgira, Goma, Caldemos, Jalhalla. Nope, that's still the wrong order. Right, one more try, otherwise I'm really going to have to admit the fact I don't actually know this. It's not what I thought it was, which is slightly irritating, but either way. Launch the f boomerang. One. Two, three, there we go. So, upon doing that, I'll show you where that order comes from later, don't worry, but it's just since we're here, Dirty Black Portal appears, and, oh, none other than the King of Red Lions appears. Scaring the crap out of us, too. I see. So this is the portal through which Ganon was able to seep unto the unsuspecting world above. Doctor, we should make use of this path that Ganon created for himself. If there is anything you need from the world above, the, if there is anything from the world above that you believe you need, then climb into the boat and enter the com um, column of darkness. So that's kind of cool to have a little kind of like way out, um, but we're not going to take it because there's other more exciting things we can do here. So, if we go to the right, we will find another room, which looks similar except it has a drop in it instead of water. You'll also notice the candles lit under there. One, two, three, and four. That's where that order comes from. I just memorized it wrong. And an interesting, if you speak to this thing, well, read the tablet here, you get a kind of cryptic message that says, the sword hilts of my servants who lurk in the de deep in the darkness shall be the guideposts that point to me. Interesting. Let's head down. Yeah, this is a place that you can head. Um, so, when you get down here, Phantom Ganons! Lots of them! Move out the way and let them kind of do their thing, and the real one will be revealed. Give him a stab, but he moved out the way. So let's try that again. Um, which one's going to be the real one? That one is! Deal enough damage to him, and he dies! His sword stays behind. The sword hilts of my servants shall be my guide. There's a number of ways out, but it's but when you kill a Phantom Ganon, its sword falls down, and the way it points immediately when it falls down is the way you need to go. Like in the, um, kind of with the other boss fights, you can, if you haven't got the figurine of Phantom Ganon, you can get it now from any of these kind of phantoms, uh, which is pretty cool. It doesn't matter which one, even the illusionary copies, if you, oh, you've got to be really quick though, it's kind of annoying. Oh, now he's doing this thing again. So, when he does this kind of red thing, it fires a lot of seeking missiles at you that are very difficult to reflect back at him, um, because you can take a hell of a lot of damage here if you're not careful. And he just does this thing where he just doesn't do the right attack for you to actually damage him. Like I got some of them back at him there, but not a lot. Eventually, after enough of that, he will do a number of things. Yeah, he's going back to doing the six-way thing. So just get ready after that to kind of attack whichever one is left. Which was that one. And then the sword once again. Pointing that way this time. You can pick up the sword and stuff like that. And there you go. It's just one of these big kind of weapons again, which is cool. But just make sure before you pick it up, you learn, well, remember which way it's pointing because you need that. You end up back at the beginning if you don't, but it makes a nice little sound if you've gone the right way, which is kind of cool. Let's see if we can hit all these back at him. Nope, none of them. And those do like two hearts of damage to you per one that hits you. They can properly brutalize you. You need to kind of be moving sideways when he does it to do like a... Oh, God. There's a way of reflecting him back to him, but it's very unreliable. Um... Oh god, he's going to keep doing that. It's, just, it's annoying because it means you haven't, just haven't got a way to hit him at all, really. Okay, a lot of those hit him back, so he should do the six-way thing again. Nope, he's not going to do it. Ugh, Phantom Ganon, you are an irritating thing, and I'm annoyed that they brought you back at this point. No, I'm not. I love a good boss fight, but hey. Um, There we go. Oh god, no, he's still... Ugh! Why are you so annoying? I'm just going to jump to the side, hit some of them back without being hit. If you're kind of moving sideways and swipe, then you usually don't get hit much. 
Oh, you're so irritating, you are. This is going to be a longer episode because he's not playing ball. Well, he is playing ball. He's playing the wrong kind of ball. There's a specific ball I wanted to play, which he's not doing. There we go. Back onto the six again. So let's let them do their things. Come in and stab the real one. Wow, the one that's marginally more real than the rest. It's all much for much just here. But either way, we'll head that way. I'm going to quickly as well drink a fairy. Don't want to die on this LP, and if I fall down and it counts, and I use a fairy on the way back up, I still count that as me dying, and I don't want that to happen. So hey, let's go through. And more Phantoms Ganon. You can see how this is going from now, can't you? Get this one. Yeah, if you just pull out of the circle, then you kind of move back in at the last moment, and you can make sure you're in the right position to strike the final one. That should be us pretty much through now. Nope, one more it's going to be. Please do the six. Yes, he's doing the six straight away. He's not messing around. Hup, no, there we go. Yeah, usually when he does the thing where he's kind of flying around solo, he often does like act like he did in the Forsaken Fortress and kind of like do some deadly tennis game of tennis, but he's just not doing that today. Don't know why. He's just being a dick. Here we go. Let's see if he does it this time. He sh yeah, we go. He shoots a blue ball now and you can kind of bounce it to and from. He's better than he was in the Forsaken Fortress, usually. Like, he'll go pretty damn fast before he lets it hit him. Especially if you're close to him. But either way, still the same process. And watch the sword hilt. Through this door, unsurprising. Now, this one looks different. And this one has bars, which means some shit important's about to happen. Some important shit, I mean by that. So, the phantom appears again. Oh, you can see kind of how this is going. Deadly tennis game of tennis! Once more. Dun. Dun. Dun, 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 dun. Ah, there we go. I thought he was going to go on for a while there. And when you kill him this time again, he just vanishes. But, obviously that's the way out. Here we go. This is what we're here for. If we open this special looking chest, we cross off something else on the visualizer. Um, there are very few columns we haven't completed on that now, but indeed with this, we obtain... The light arrow. When you take out your bow, use ZR to change arrowheads, and then fire away. The sacred light of these arrows can pierce pure evil itself. Kind of the way out unlocks, and indeed, let's kind of put those on. This is kind of the third arrowhead we've got. So we've got fire, ice, and now light. These use more magic than fire and ice arrows, but they have some serious advantages, which I will demonstrate shortly. So now we're back up in this room, and if we try and kind of go forward... Phantom Ganon's theme starts again, and Phantom Ganon appears. Don't fight him this time, though. Bam! He can be as illusionary and tricksy as he wants, but he can't hide from the light arrows themselves. Not sure why I said sss there. But that didn't seem to accomplish much. Indeed. Pick up his sword, and then you see that kind of Phantom Ganon symbol on the wall. Whoop! You can just hit it with the sword there, but it's more fun to throw it. And that's Phantom Ganon defeated. Now, by this point, if you hadn't taken a pictograph of him, bad luck. But you did just come across like 30 of him. So if you really wanted the pictograph, you've missed your chance. So, this episode, we have successfully beaten, like, every boss we've ever fought again, apart from the Helmrock King. The Helmrock King is the only boss you truly only fight once. Um, and so now, most of the way up Ganon's Tower. Next episode, we will be continuing up to the very peak of Ganon's Tower. Thank you very much, and good day.